All right, guys, what you're looking at here is a wiring schematic for the uh, grade crossing uh, circuitry. Uh, and I'll show you and give you a basic idea of how it works. Uh, and then uh, I will do a mock-up and uh, on my table here and we'll see how it works. Anyhow, um, what we're going to do is um, get these parts right here. Sorry about that. Anyhow, we will start down here at the power supply. Uh, it says to use uh, anywhere between 9 and 18 volts DC. Uh, both of these take the same uh, power re requirements, so you can use one power supply. And what I use for power supply, believe it or not, is one of these. And I know that you guys have some of these. Um, this one happens to be a bit small. Uh, it gives you all the information you need to see right here. Uh, this one's only seven and a half volts, so this one's no good for this operation. Um, this unit here is the bell module, and it looks like this. And I have it oriented the same exact way. Now, the speaker could be any size, but it needs to be 8 ohms. Um, the two terminals here need to get a loop. And then, uh, like I said, the power supply will feed here, and it'll come up and feed here also, and it also feeds the uh, crossing signals. Next, for this to work, uh, from the TO terminal on the main circuit board, which is this one right here, will come out here and go into the uh, bell crossing module. And that this is probably going to be supplying the ground or, or the current or whatever. Um, anyhow, um, I also have this board oriented the way you see it on the paper. So we'll get on to the uh, next part of this. This here is a track, not a very good, not a very good drawing here, but it, it's a track. And these are your photo cells. There's four of them. Now the way this operates is, if a train's coming from this direction and it covers WF, uh, it'll automatically get the lights and or the bell and or the gray crossing uh, gates if you have them. <clears throat> so it will come down. This is the ground wire. They all have a common ground wire and it comes down to here to where it says ground on the control module. So, train coming here covers this one. And as it goes across, the last car that passes over this one will turn the lights off. Now, if a train is coming this way and the module doesn't see this one getting covered, uh, after 35 seconds, it'll turn the lights off. So that's good for switching operations, you know, so you don't want to have the lights going or bell going all the time. All right. Each one of the terminals here is marked with uh, EF or PF, PN, and then WNF or something like that. Anyhow, I can't see them from here. Anyhow, each one of these has a designated uh, terminal on, on the circuit board. Um, I'm assuming, because I don't know how the electronics are working in here, I'm assuming that this is going to supply whatever, the ground or the power, to uh, operate the, uh, the uh, crossing signals. And uh, check out the drawing on these crossing signals, guys, huh? Uh, Monet's got nothing on me. I'll tell you that right now. All right. Now, there is an option. This is here. There's an option for day or night operations with a separate diagram because I couldn't fit it in here. Anyhow, this is what it would look like. So basically it's the same thing. These are all your ground wires. And what you would do is you would break the ground wire, which is this one here, put a resistor in there and a single pulse double throw switch. And uh, that'll give you uh, differentiate between the lighting situation that you're currently using. Down here is a switch. Uh, it's a setup switch 
for you to be able to set up the sensor sensitivity, this switch needs to be in the closed position or the on position. Um, <clears throat> and once it's in the on position, uh, it won't operate the way it's supposed to until you flip it back to the off position. But anyhow, when you put it to the on position, there's a, there's a red LED that's right here. And you turn each pot all the way down. These are adjusting pots right here. Uh, you turn the adjusting pots all the way down uh, counterclockwise and then one at a time you bring it up until the LED just barely comes on. As soon as it comes on you just turn it back counterclockwise again until the light just goes off and you repeat that for all pots. Make sure you put your switch back into the off position otherwise it won't work. Uh, what else? <coughs> Excuse me. These terminals right here are if you have a tortoise machine or some sort of a machine that you want to operate, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, tortoise machine to work the arm on the uh, crossing gate would we'll hook it up to these terminals right here. Okay, now you're going to be using, I'm going to be actually using three, but I didn't feel like uh, showing up Monet so much, I only did two. Um, but. We have the wires coming out of the uh, uh, grade crossing. Um, you would go into these two terminals down here and then you would just piggyback the next one and then the next one. Um, the system will handle up to 12 LEDs. Uh, I just happen to have 12 so I might might not hook up one or, one or two of the wires on two of the separate uh, crossing gates. Uh, and that will eliminate four LEDs. Anyhow, um, the next part of this video, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do a mock-up and let's see if this actually works. Um, I know it does because I had it on my previous layout. It works pretty damn good. Anyhow, um, another guy that you can check out if you want to see the operation of them is uh, uh, Q and NE Railroad, Sheldon. Uh, he's got his fully operational now uh, and he did a really good job on it. He's got some different kinds of setups on there. Anyhow, uh, stay tuned and we'll be back for a little bit more. Alright guys, what you're looking at here is my beginning of my mock-up for the uh, grade crossing um, that I'm going to be showing you guys. First thing I did was I marked the uh, sensors uh, according to the uh, um, electrical schematic. I also secured a piece of track here and I drilled all my holes for the sensors. Um, then what I did was I soldered my wires onto my sensors. Um, what I'm going to be using, um, since I have a lack of wire, is uh, if you guys remember when I was doing my helix, I used a piece of rail as a bus bar. And so that's what I'm going to do for the ground wires on this here because they will all be common. So stay tuned and uh, we'll start hooking this up and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So be, uh, be right back. All right, one thing I forgot to mention is the sensors are not polarity uh, sensitive, so you can wire them up any way you want. Um, the black on here is just to protect it from shorting out uh, against each other. Um, it won't hurt anything. If it does short out, the system just won't work. So anyhow, uh, let's continue on. I'll be right back. All right, guys, the next step was I go ahead, went ahead and added the ground wires from the sensor to my uh, rail down here, as you can see it. Uh, also, the... Uh, first module is hooked up um, and that is the uh, speaker module. Um, the only thing I need to do now is run a wire from the main control board over to the bell uh, control board. So stay tuned and we will be right back. Alright guys, the next thing I did was uh, wire up the uh, sensors to the uh, main control board and also I ran my wire from the control board over to the bell module so the bell module is complete. Um, the next thing I'm going to be doing is uh, hooking up the uh, the signal itself. So stay tuned and we shall be right back. Alright guys, I'm going to use Old Faithful, my MRC power pack that I've had and I got it set at uh, 12 volts. Um, let me get you back down here to the uh, modules. And I'll show you that everything is hooked up. So basically all I got to do is get the power to it and we'll give it a test run. 
So hang on and we'll be right back. All right guys, first thing we're gonna do on this uh, is um, see if it actually turns off after 35 seconds without going over the second sensor. Uh, I don't know why the bell is not working right now. I'll have to figure that out later on. But anyhow, let's, uh, let's give this a shot. And look at that, works perfect, 33 seconds. Anyhow, let's go ahead and give it the next test, which will be uh, if a train was coming from this direction, oops, and going across the entire uh, track, and let's see if it turns off when we get past the uh, sensor that is here. So uh, let's get this going now. All right, so I'm just gonna use my finger, and we get it started. And let's say we got a long train going through, and then we'll come across the next sensor, and it should shut off in about three to five seconds. And there you go. So, um, that is my mock up of the uh, Gray Crossing. Gray Crossing Pro is the name of the company. Uh, you guys can look it up online, and you can see all the directions in there. There's lots more stuff you can do with this. Uh, I'm just doing the basic setup, and uh, so that's why. Uh, I did a mock-up first because as you can see the mess of wires I got there um, and so it was easier for me to do a mock-up rather than do it on my layout anyhow basically uh, it'll be set up the same uh, the distance between the sensors uh, just remember that you have to be within 35 seconds of the first sensor to the second sensor um, if you don't make it to 35 seconds, the lights will shut off. Anyhow, uh, I think this was a good demo. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, your questions, comments, input, and subs are always welcome. For now, that's all folks. BNSF 6951 out. All right, guys, now that you've seen how it works, uh, I'll give you a little bit of information on the control panel itself. If you are using uh, gate motors uh, to operate the uh, arms of the crossing gate, this right here will adjust the time it takes for the gate to come down and go up. Uh, that'll be to your own likings, whatever you'd like to do there, you can do. Right here is your setup switch. Um, they both have to be in the off position in order for the system to work. Here's the LED that I spoke about earlier. And these right here are the pots to adjust the sensitivity for the um, uh, sensors. All right, now let's move over to the bell module. And I really don't know why it's not working yet. But anyhow, on the bell module, you have a uh, volume control. And that volume control is right here. Anyhow, you can adjust the volume to, the, uh, to your liking again. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to mount the speaker. Most likely, I'll put it inside a building. The fire department looks like it's big enough to hold the speaker. So uh, we'll see how that goes from there. Anyhow, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, stay tuned, and uh, we'll get back to the rest of it. All right, guys, during my editing process, I realized I didn't show you uh, the opposite direction. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, oops, turn my phone back on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, 35 minute, uh, 35 second test first. So let's see if we can get that going. All right. All right, we just lost a couple of seconds there. So whatever it is, we'll uh, just add those couple of seconds on.
I think the time should be just a bit shorter, uh, but I guess uh, they have their reasons for doing it at 35 seconds. All right, so we're gonna add about three or four seconds onto that, so approximately 30 seconds. All right, we got that done and out of the way. Let's go ahead and do the uh, full crossing. <clears throat> All right, and we'll start it going. And then switch my fingers around and we'll cross the second one. And then now once we get across that third sensor, three to five seconds and the light should go out. And there you go, works like a charm. Uh, just got to figure out why the bell module is not working. Anyhow, uh, again, thanks for watching. And as always, your questions, comments, input, and subs are always welcome. Uh, I'm glad I did this uh, requested video for my subs. Uh, it gave me actually a little bit of practice. Anyhow, uh, talk to you guys later. BNSF 6951, out. All right, guys. I really couldn't leave this video going without getting the bell working. Uh, one thing about troubleshooting uh, that I have learned is being an automotive technician for as long as I have been, uh, you always check the last thing you did first to see if that's the problem. And so that's what I did. I went back to the original wiring diagram and my diagram uh, and I just had it wired wrong. So anyhow, uh, let's give you a little demonstration. There you go. Works like cream puff. Anyhow, I just wanted to get this in there because <laughs> I couldn't let it go without having the bell work and show you the full operation. I thought there would be a little bit of a rate adjustment on the module for the bell, but there isn't. Just the volume control. And let me tell you, um, my buddy Carmine told me that uh, the size of the speaker is not for how low, loud you can get it, but for the quality of the sound. And Carmine, you are 100% right. That bell sounds really good. Anyhow, again, thanks for watching. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, BNSF 6951, out.